Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, coming today and uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about a new offering uh, we are launching, uh, which is uh, called the Risk Spotlight Vendor Radar. Uh, so the agenda is that I will uh, give you an overview of uh, why we are launching this offering and what sort of business problem uh, we are solving uh, with this new offering. Uh, and then I'll spend the bulk of the time in the demo, which is where uh, we'll have opportunity uh, to do Q&A. And then, of course, I'll, I'll leave some time in the end uh, in case there are other Q and A's uh, independent uh, of the demo which come out. So, in terms of the business problem, then giving an overview, uh, I think so. None of this yeah should be a surprise that yeah organizations are more and more uh, relying on vendor not only for non-core processes but also core processes and IT systems, uh, and particularly around outsourcing. Uh, is where the, the level of outsourcing has yeah, uh, only increased in the last uh, five to seven years. Uh, and uh, cyber criminals are now also increasingly using third parties as a channel you know, to attack, uh, launch cyber attacks against the vendor. So that angle uh, with the third parties also uh, become relevant in the last couple of years. And we saw this big incident uh, with solar winds in the US uh, where through solar winds, uh, cyber criminals were able to target you know, hundreds and thousands of organizations uh, in terms of installing malware uh, on their IT system. So, so that has also yeah, ma uh, made this topic only more relevant in terms of monitoring the vendors and the risks associated uh, with those uh, vendors. Uh, similarly, uh, being aware of uh, operational risks, you know, then of course is important that you, you want to monitor the vendors, but also risks associated with them. And operational resilience, uh, the focus of operational resilience by the regulator is also making that as a relevant topic. Uh, and FCA highlighted that out of all the different operational resilience incidents they've seen in the UK, uh, the, there, were, there was a large percentage which came through the third party. So, so that's also a focus uh, from that res resilience and regulatory uh, perspective. Uh, but monitoring, you know, all the key vendor, it, it takes a lot of time and effort. And that's where a lot of organizations then just don't have the resources or the bandwidth uh, to invest in monitoring, you know, everything which is going on with the vendors to identify if there are, if there is any uh, emerging trend, emerging risk in related to a, a key vendor you're dealing with, uh, so that you can take proactive action rather than, you know, waiting for something to go wrong. And then only then you find out uh, uh, that you know there was an issue uh, related with that vendor, and that sort of is the is the business problem. Yeah, we're trying to solve that. the the uh, The complexity of the challenge has only increased and only expected to increase. Uh, and uh, because these third parties are outside, monitoring is one of the business problems. So of course, there are lots of other issues around vendor risk management, but monitoring your key vendors or what what's happening with your key vendors, so that you can be proactive about any changes. Uh, is where we see that uh, the, uh, the organizations are struggling with that and there were not many good solutions out there, which is why we decided to uh, invest in that space and build an offering uh, in that space. And, and that's what we're launching today uh, in form of vendor radar, where it will be a ability for you to monitor your key vendors. So the objective or the value proposition is it should reduce the amount of time. So your team, uh, instead of going and searching on Google for all your vendors, uh, we can give you all the information in one place so you can then spend more time on reviewing that information and uh, uh, interpreting that or applying that to how you're managing your vendor risks or how uh, you're managing the relationship with the vendors. Yeah, so that sort of is where the vendor radar offering uh, would add value. Uh, in terms of yeah, why are we doing this at Risk Spotlight, because we, we see this as a logical extension that we want to be the eyes and ears for our customers uh, when it comes to external content. So we already do that with the Risk Spotlight portal, where we bring in operational risk related content into a Risk Spotlight portal and categorize it uh, by the different risks. Uh, so, so this vendor monitoring was a logical extension where we, we're using the same technology, same set of processes, but now extending the scope of the articles to also bring those articles, which can tell you something relevant about your uh, key vendors. And all this yeah, will be provided through this, uh, the same sort of portal interface uh, we, we are providing to our subscribers right now. Uh, and the advantages that uh, we have already tools and technologies in place, which are scanning all these uh, global news sources, 
to look at uh, risk related articles. So from a vendor perspective, we're utilizing that same sort of global source. So you, you will get to know articles about the vendors you know, from a global perspective. Uh, and then we will perform some basic analysis on that. So we're not going to you know, just give you a, a set of articles with the raw data. We are trying to see how we can prioritize those articles so that you can quickly then see what are the most relevant article uh, in terms of your vendor. And then of course, because our operational risk and resilience uh, uh, experience, you know, we're looking at this data from that perspective. You know? So we're not just a media company uh, where we're providing you lots of news articles. We, we're looking at everything from that risk management perspective where it should add value in terms of uh, improving how you're managing the risks related to those vendors in your organization. So, so we look at all the content we collect and provide. Uh, from that perspective. Uh, and then of course, yeah, we want to be as uh, high quality, comprehensive, pragmatic, but most importantly, cost effective. So we did see that in the market, there are offerings uh, where you can uh, subscribe to an offering and then uh, you can get you know, uh, news and articles about organization, but they don't focus on vendor, they just focus on like company. So you can then go and do research on any company, uh, but then you have to go and do the research rather than the research coming to you. And we saw that those offerings were really expensive. So, you know, a, a lot of tier three, tier four organizations would not be able to afford that, uh, those sort of offerings. Uh, and they were not focused just on the vendor. So they were like more generic offerings. And then, you know, you have to use it from a vendor perspective. So, so the content then does not meet or align very closely with what you may need from a risk management perspective. So that's where sort of, yeah, we saw the gap that uh, there was nothing which was specific in terms of vendor monitoring from a risk management perspective uh, at, a, at a cost effective price. So that sort of is where our value proposition is to uh, solve this problem from that perspective. Uh, and then we've yeah, provided the pricing to meet the different size and complexities, uh, which I can uh, highlight sort of yeah, in, in the slide after this. So this is then the detail of how the vendor service will work. So it'll be an annual service. Uh, and in this case, you customize the service. So you give us the list of your 15, 20, 50, 100 uh, key vendors you want to monitor. And we will then use our scanning technology we have to bring all the relevant articles about your key vendors. So when you log into the service, you will only see articles related to the vendors you are dealing with. You don't then have to worry about all the other vendors. Uh, which we may be collecting on for other organizations. So, so that way then you can focus on and just get the content uh, specific to your vendors. Uh, and then I've already I've talked about the global news sources. So you know, we will make sure that the search is comprehensive and global. So you get the most relevant information about your vendors. We will prioritize uh, those articles so you can then quickly see the high priority first if you're short on time. And then if you have more time, then you can look at the other uh, articles in case they may be relevant. Uh, and then you would log into the uh, into the portal uh, to then see these articles. So, so that will be the service where you will get access to that content. Uh, and we will also extend this to uh, give you notification. So you'll be able to say that, okay, if there is a article about this particular vendor, then you know, send me a notification so that you don't have to then log into the service to see that there was an article relevant for your vendor. Uh, and then, of course, you can change uh, these vendors. So we had a session yesterday, and there was one question was uh, that if we want to do due diligence on a particular vendor, can we add that vendor for like a month or so? And then if we decide not to engage with that vendor, can we remove that? So, of course, yeah, we will allow you that capability where you can add and remove vendors at any stage. Uh, so, so you will have that flexibility. So you're not just stuck with one list of vendors you provide to us. Uh, and then you will use this to actively monitor yeah, any vendor related risks, any uh, emerging threats you know, related to uh, the different uh, vendor organizations. Yeah. So that's where one place where this is different yeah, to the other offerings we provide is that in this case, yeah, you are customizing. So you give us the list of the vendors you want to be monitored. And then when you log into the service, uh, you will only get a customized list of uh, content related to your key vendors. And then this is uh, what we are uh, offering in terms of pricing. So if you start with, let's say, up to 25 vendors, then the annual subscription you know, would be 4990. Uh, if you have more key vendors, then you, know, you can go up to on the silver package with up to 100 vendors, and that's uh, 9,990. And then with the gold, you can go up to 250 uh, with 19,990 as the annual subscription. 
Uh, and if you then you have more than 250 vendors, then we can talk and we can create a, a more customized uh, a service offering uh, for you. Uh, but we we understand that yeah because most organizations will only use this for the key vendors so you may have a relationship with lots of vendors uh, but you know from a monitoring perspective from a risk management perspective the priority list should be smaller and we assume that yeah uh, uh, these three packages should suffice most of the organizations uh, but of course yeah if there are more key vendors then uh, we we have the technology it can be easily extended uh, to cover that uh, so this can either be uh, added to your uh, existing risk spotlight portal subscription. So uh, if you are subscribing to that, or it can be completely standalone. So if you don't subscribe to risk spotlight portal, then you can also buy it as a standalone uh, subscription. Uh, like I mentioned, yeah, you can update, keep updating your vendor list. So you know, if you have, let's say, you start with twenty-five vendors uh, at the start of the subscription, and then uh, two vendors you stop working with, you can remove them and then replace them with other two vendors. So you still sort of yeah, stay within that 25 uh, vendor uh, bracket, which was also one of the questions uh, we had in uh, the session yesterday. Uh, and then of course, yeah, we want you to try this offering for yourself uh, for free uh, for one month. Uh, so if you are interested in that, uh, then send us an email on portal support at riskspotlight.com. Uh, and uh, we can uh, offer you a one month free trial. And then as part of that, just tell us yeah, which five vendors you would want to monitor. So in the trial, we're limiting it to five vendors. Uh, but of course, you know, once you subscribe and depending on the package, you can have uh, more vendors. So if you if you are interested in that, then we de definitely very keen uh, for you to trial and get your feedback. And because it's a new offering, we're also giving a uh, offering a 50% discount. Uh, if you subscribe uh, in within the next four weeks or so before the end of March, uh, then you know we, we want our uh, subscribers, portal subscribers, for example, to also uh, uh, become subscribers of this new service. So, so we're providing that incentive uh, for the early adopters. Okay. So let me just pause there and see if there's any questions here before I jump into the demo. Uh, and I'll also keep an eye on the chat in case you post any questions there. Okay, so I don't see this, uh, no questions on chat. Uh, let me just pause and see if there's anybody wants to unmute and ask a question verbally. So Manoj, Gavin here. So if you go for a Rick Spotlight portal access, and you also go for this vendor radar process, so is this a difference in the subscription price or it's, a, it's the, in addition to what is the subscription price for Risk Spotlight portal access? Oh, so they, they are yeah, completely different uh, offerings. Uh, so so yeah, so this pricing is only the vendor radar offering. And then of course, yeah, Risk Spotlight then has its own pricing structure, which will be, uh, which, which is different. So there is no overlap in terms of pricing. So pricing wise, yeah, they're two uh, completely separate. Okay. But I, I know, yeah, your organization right now is not a subscriber. So yeah, if you right now wanted to subscribe both to Portal and vendor radar service, then of course, yeah, we can we can look at what we can do commercially. Sure. If you want to subscribe to both, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I, I've I've got one one question. Yes, um, I suppose, and and that is, you're probably aware we are looking at looking at um, importing risk spotlight into um, Exactium. Um, this this time, sometimes during this year, yeah. is that offering the same that you can import this vendor radar? It might be before we see it first into something like Exactium. Yes, yeah. So because this will be uh, your vendor content, so you will have the flexibility uh, to take that content, and then if you want to take it into an Excel file and do some analysis with it internally or you want to import that into your risk management tool, then you will have that flexibility to take the data out and import it into any tool you may you are using in-house. So that option is uh, available and it's included in that pricing. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Keith, Keith, sorry, just to follow up on that. So in the same way that we would provide the data um, from the portal, for you into exactly and we can provide it in exactly the same format um, because it's on the same it's on the same application so we can provide it in exactly the same 
same format it just probably goes into a different place into the exactium into the exactium software but yeah that's not a problem at all okay so if there are any questions then yeah just uh, uh, put them on the chat window and uh, i can come back and pick those up uh, later so let's go and actually see what the offering looks like so let me then launch into Okay, so this is the uh, where I've logged in now as a user organization. So, so we are collecting right now about 115 vendors. Uh, we have started already monitoring and then we have a history of those uh, 115 vendors. So, so in this case, I'm showing for demo purposes, one organization where they have selected about 13 vendors uh, who are important for them. So, so it's a subset. So that's why you'll see fewer vendors here. Uh, but in, in, in the back end, yeah, we are monitoring uh, uh, 115 vendors at the moment as a starting point. So, so in this case, when I log in, then this is where I will be able to see uh, the most relevant uh, article or the most recent article in this case, uh, sorted by the publish date uh, about the 13 vendors I have selected. Uh, so and, and these articles get updated on a daily basis. So every time you log in, you will see the most recent articles will already be on the top. Uh, and then you can look at the titles of those articles to see which of those articles may be interesting. So in this case, we can see, okay, Microsoft is you know, building some industry specific clouds. So if you want to read that particular article, then you can click on that hyperlink. Uh, and then yeah, they are in this case, building uh, financial services uh, specific clouds, uh, which may be interesting for organizations then yeah, who want to use Microsoft uh, going forward if they're also uh, building you know, industry specific cloud. So it's a it's a it's a relevant information. Then if yeah, that was one of the vendor. I think most organization will have some sort of relationship with Microsoft. Yeah, how the the value of that relationship may vary across the organization. Uh, so so that's how you read an article, uh, and then uh, you can sort the articles. So you will see that by uh, priority is what we are giving you, where we are applying some rules in the background to say that okay, priority one are the most important articles. Uh, about that particular vendor. So you can filter if you just want to read priority one related articles, then I can click on filter, apply the filter. So if you yeah, have limited time, then you can just read all of these priority one articles to see if anything uh, relevant has been published about your key vendors. And you know, does that require you to change something in terms of how you're managing the risk with that vendor or the relationship uh, you have uh, with that vendor? On the right hand side is where I will be able to see uh, two views. So, so I'll be able to see which of my key vendors has been in the news more in the last 90 days. So in this case, we can see Microsoft, SolarWinds, MasterCard are the top three vendors who've been in the news in the last 90 days. And this gives uh, a, a 12 month sort of 365 days, which vendors have been in the news uh, over those uh, over the 365 uh, day period. And then you can drill down. So if I want to see like KPMG, for example, I want to read what those 17 articles are. I can click on that and then I can see what are the articles. Why is KPMG is in, in the news uh, at the moment? And then I can read any of those articles by clicking on uh, that hyperlink icon. Similarly, I can also do that from the 365. So if you know Zoom is uh, something we are considering, then you can drill down and see if you know there are any issues or problems being reported around uh, the Zoom uh, the, the, the Zoom offering or products and services uh, or what is happening yeah, with that uh, particular vendor. So you can drill down from those graphs to see uh, and then focus on just the articles relevant for a particular vendor. Uh, in this case, we are just showing you priority one and two articles, but if you want to see all, so we have a four priorities, so one to four. So if you want to see all the articles, then you can click on view vendor articles, and now it will also give you priority three and four articles. So then you have the complete set of articles about your vendors. Uh, and on, on this screen, you can you know then filter by lots of parameters. So if I just want to see articles uh, related to MasterCard, for example, then I can just see click on filter, uh, click on apply, and then it will only show me articles related to MasterCard. So I can filter for any of the vendors and just focus on uh, the subset of the articles and then review those. Uh, and there are other options available for you to sort. So you can you know, sort it by articles published in a particular period or from a particular source or 
whether yeah, that vendor is mentioned in the title of the article, because if they are mentioned in the title of the article, then it's very likely that the article is about them. But if they're not mentioned in the title of the article, then maybe yeah, they are being referred or uh, they are part of the story, but probably not part of the, of the main story. So you can you know, also filter by that particular parameter. So let me clear the filter so we can then see uh, all the articles here. Uh, and you can then sort these by, uh, uh, you can sort these by any of those columns. So if you want to sort them, let's say the vendor mention frequency, uh, which is how many times that vendor has been mentioned in that article. So if I uh, click on that, then I can see that there's this one article where yeah, IBM has been mentioned 29 times. Uh, and in this case, SAP has been mentioned 22 times. So, so then that just tells you that, okay, there's more discussion or more topics being discussed about that vendor uh, in that particular article. Okay. Or you can sort it out by priority, you can sort it alphabetically by title. So you just click on the column heading and you can do that sorting. If I click on the uh, definitive logo there, so that'll take me to the homepage. Uh, then there are various other ways in which now you can view the information. So if you click on the view monitoring keywords, then this will give you a list of all your vendors uh, you, are, you are monitoring and it will show you the latest article. So what is the latest article for which that vendor is in the news and when was that article published? And then it also gives you an idea of how many total articles uh, do you have uh, related uh, to those vendors. And then of course you can click on, so if I click on KPMG, for example, then you can drill down and then just see the articles related to KPMG. So if you want to uh, focus on one particular vendor, then that drill down option is available. But what, what, the reason I like this view is it gives you like a latest article. So if you don't have time to read a lot, uh, you can just come here and see, okay, if there's anything interesting from the most uh, latest article, uh, which has been published about that vendor, and then you can decide whether you want to drill down and read a little bit more uh, about that particular vendor. So that's one view. Let me go back uh, to the home page. Uh, another view, if you were monitoring lots of vendors, is just uh, using the sort of alphabetical breakdown. So I can, you know, just click on A to E and then get all the vendors, and then I can click on Equifax and then see, okay, what are the news articles related to Equifax? I can click on Experian. So it's another easy way of monitoring if you have lots of uh, vendors. Uh, then it gives you a way to quickly slice and dice uh, where you can click on a particular vendor and quickly browse if you know, there's anything relevant about that vendor in the news at the moment. Okay. Uh, if you want to uh, change the list of vendors or if, if you want to add additional users uh, 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 who should have access uh, to this particular subscription, then that's where we're giving you the flexibility to submit those change requests. So this is where you can come here and say, you know, uh, so you can say, okay, please add uh, Citrix or, or Cisco uh, to our vendor list. Uh, so you can sort of, yeah, submit your request. If there are new users who uh, who's joined your team and you want to give them access, then you can provide them access. Uh, you can give the details of those users here and then just click on the save and close and that will then send us the request and then you can monitor all your requests from here. So you'll be able to see all the requests you've sent. And then we, uh, once we uh, process those requests, we'll mark those as close. And we will then also inform you uh, through email uh, when those changes are done. So we're also giving you an easy way to sort of have that interaction uh, in case you wanted to change something about uh, the, the subscription. So those are the various ways in which you can then slice and dice and look at uh, the, uh, you can look at the data. Uh, one thing which uh, I wanted to show if I go back to the vendor article, so it is possible that there are certain people in the organization like the procurement team on the vendor risk team that they may be focusing that one person may be focusing on two or three vendors, another person may be focusing on another two or three key vendors, and then they may only be interested in quickly getting access to the article for the vendors uh, on whom they are focusing on. Uh, so I just wanted to show one personalization feature of how your users will be able to personalize. So in this case, if I take an example uh, that I am from a vendor team and I only focus on uh, Microsoft and MasterCard. So I want to now create something where if I come into the service, I want to quickly just see articles related to Microsoft and MasterCard. Then to do that, I can click on filter and first of all, 
just applying that filter for the first time. So if I say Microsoft and MasterCard, so I will click on apply. So now I have a page which only uh, is showing MasterCard and Microsoft articles. I can now click on the favorites. So if I click on the star, then I can say uh, MasterCard and Microsoft articles and click on add for that. And then I will just add these two checkboxes. Uh, so then they will be now available for me going forward and just click on save. So what that will do is that tomorrow when I come back into the service and I log in, I now have this new tab called MasterCard and Microsoft. So I can then just click in that and then it'll take me straight to the articles related to the vendors I'm interested in. I don't have to then go and see all the vendors and do that filtering every time I come into the application. And of course, each user can do this. So if somebody was then focusing on IBM and Cisco, then they can just select that uh, in their uh, personalization. So each user can then have as many of these tabs as possible where they can personalize uh, access to a particular content. And of course, you can use all the criteria. So if, if you want to have one tab on MasterCard and Microsoft, just priority one and one and two articles, or you can have MasterCard and uh, Microsoft articles for the last 30 days. So there are lots of ways in which you can create that filter and just get to a specific information very easily. Uh, so it, it makes the whole user experience a slightly easier to use. So that was sort of yeah, one feature I wanted to uh, highlight uh, in terms of uh, personalization. So with that, uh, I think we have covered, uh, we have covered yeah, most of the features I wanted to cover. So let me just pause and see uh, if there is anything on chat or we can ask questions now. Uh, Okay. Manoj, I have one question here. Yes. So these articles, some of the articles require subscription, actually. For example, if you end up having an article on your portal from FT, Financial Times and all, or from risk.net, yeah. you need a subscription. So do you, how you manage those articles? But do we have to have our own subscription or you will have a tie up with these companies to have subscription for us to go through those articles? That's the one question I have first. Yeah. So, so again, uh, we right now don't include articles from paid sources. So like your yeah, Financial Times, you mentioned Wall Street Journal is another source uh, you mentioned. So we don't include those uh, because, yeah, if we were to go and do a tie up with them, then our price points will you know, shoot up by like 100 times. Uh, and of course, yeah, we don't want to provide articles to subscribers where they may or may not have that paid subscription. So but of course, we subscribe to those. So if we do find articles that are uh, published in Financial Times and if it is a important article about a vendor, then there will be lots of other sources like Reuters, Guardian, BBC, who will also cover that. So we then go and find if that same article or the same story is available from a, uh, a publicly available source. And that is what we will include in this offering. So we will, you will not see any articles related to uh, any, any paid sources in, in this service. Yeah, but, it, but what we have experienced is that, yeah, if something significant happens, then yeah, everybody's going to cover that, right? So it's not just going to be a financial time story. So what, what uh, may be specific to financial times or Wall Street Journal is if they are journalists, then write some expert expertise comment related articles, which then only gets published in their journal, then yeah, that's the sort of articles then you won't uh, have access to. But if something happens with a vendor, then lots of other sources are also going to cover uh, those articles. So which areas do you cover when you when you look for those articles? Do you look for the articles at google.co.uk or you, maybe, I'm just, just giving an example, actually, or you look for some other domain names based out of US, based out of India, based out of you know, Australia. So how do you, how in the back end, how these are collected actually, these articles? Yeah, so so right now we have around 115 uh, media news websites. So like in, in UK, Guardian, for example, is one. Uh, BBC is another one. Uh, Payments.com is another one. Uh, in uh, US, we have, uh, you know, similar websites in Canada. So we've identified in the G20 countries, what are the three or four main websites uh, where information about organization or information about operational risk is published. And then that's what we use for the scanning of our portal articles. And we're using those same 115 sources to also search for this. So, so these are very focused search searches. 
because we have customers in Middle East then who where we have to go and then look at the websites of those newspapers uh, in Middle East. Similarly, we have customers in India. So we have in India like Economic Times, NDTV, uh, dot com. So there are uh, Times of India, for example. So, so we have included then what are the top news sources in each of the G20 countries, and we've included them. So, so they're more focused searches where we are going to these sources and we are looking at then the business pages uh, of those sources. And that's where we will then find uh, articles related to operational risk and we will uh, have articles related to uh, those vendors. And then, of course, there are lots of other websites where they, they are not just media, but they focus on a particular uh, topic. So, so payments.com, for example, yeah, focuses on payments related infrastructure, payment risk related articles. So, so we captured that. Uh, similarly, there is Transparency International, which focuses on corruption, or FCP, FCPA blog, which focuses also on bribery. So if a, if a vendor gets fined because of bribery, then they will be covered on the FCPA uh, website. So, so we've also identified in that 115 websites like that where they are focusing on specific types of operational risk, and we're then scanning those on a daily basis to see if there is anything relevant from an operational risk perspective, which then goes into our portal offering, and if it is specific to a vendor, then it will be provided in this particular offering. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair to say over the last uh, seven years of gathering the information for the portal, we've sort of become expert in where those good sources of financial services related risk information is. So that's why we've managed to hone it in on those particular on those particular news sources. And then we're using AI and machine learning to you know determine the the relevant articles for those specific vendors. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, filtering and um, you know knowledge that's gone into the into the back of this to uh, to bring out the relevant articles. Okay, thanks, Amin. So I, if I understood correctly, you are you have the, the you have a database of these articles spanning last seven years, if I have um, understood correctly also, right? In, so for how long you keep this, these, these articles with you actually? Yeah, so that is true for the portal. Yes, yeah, so portal, we have the history, but of course the vendor is a new offering. So right now uh, we have collected the history since August last year is where, so we, we're not planning to go back uh, seven years of history of these vendors. Uh, so we are going until August uh, last year, August 2020, and we are collecting, so all the 115 vendors we have, okay. the history since August 2020, because in this case, yeah, it's it's more, what is happening with those vendors now is more interesting than, you know, maybe what happened three yeah. or four years ago. Yeah. And the, and the, key, thing, the, key, yes, thing about, the key thing about this uh, service, I mean, and our portal service really is, it's a focus on forward looking, which a lot of things don't do. Um, it's about trying to see on the horizon where there are potential risks with vendors that you may be using or vendors that those vendors are using that may have an impact on your organization to try and preempt that. So this is all about proactive risk management forward looking. I mean, obviously, you can also use it to do some due diligence um, on vendors in terms of things that may have happened in the recent past. But um, the sort of main focus and our fate on our main sort of goal from a risk management perspective is really proactive forward looking risk management thanks yeah okay and then let me see if there was any question yeah and and also uh, because we were talking about yeah that scanning part so uh, one of the exciting things right now is that we're also using artificial intelligence in the background. So that's why it's not just like a simple web scraping where you know we just go to the website and bring the content. There is a lot of analysis to filter out the articles and bring the relevant articles. Uh, and then yeah, luckily there is a lot happened in the artificial intelligence space in the last two months, uh, uh, sorry, last two years, uh, which has made it really easy that there, there's lots of now tools and capabilities available. Uh, so that's a, another focus area for us is to try and bring artificial intelligence into the risk space so we can see, okay, how can we uh, better manage risk uh, by using artificial intelligence technologies? And this is yeah, one example of getting all that unstructured content uh, from lots of different sources and then trying to create some structure around it so that you have that information available in a structured way. You don't have to go to 100 different websites to try and find out 
what's happening with your with your vendors we will do all that work and we will use technology to sort of yeah, make that work as efficient as possible so you get all that information you know in in one place so so there is definitely also a lot of uh, uh, advanced sort of artificial intelligence uh, nlp type technology which we are using in the in the background Okay, so I don't see any more questions here. Uh, I've got, sorry, I've just got yes. one question. I probably should know this. Uh, yeah. Naturally, various committees and boards, so it's useful to take this information to, to those meetings. How do I extract, and I should probably know from the actual risk side of things, but how do I extract this data and put it into a report? Uh, so if you want to, so what we will give you is we will give you an export to Excel option here. So so okay. you will be then able to click on that Excel option and then all the content will uh, get into Excel and then you can create your graphs and things in Excel. Or if you want uh, this chart, then we can give you an export. So I haven't enabled the other export here, but there is a way to save this chart as a PDF file or you can save it as a PowerPoint presentation. And then you can, you know, if uh, you don't want, there's no additional work needed. You just wanted to display that as is, then you can yeah. take that chart. I mean, you can actually just cut and cut and paste sort of snip from the screen itself. But it you can do that also. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So, so let me then just take to that last page. Uh, in, in terms of yeah the the offering and the pricing and yeah particularly how like highlight the trial so it'll be great for uh, 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 for us to yeah get your uh, trial request so we can then you know uh, show you 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 can try this out yeah for a, a month for free with the vendors yeah which are relevant uh, and specific to you uh, and something yeah I didn't highlight earlier is that the pricing yeah includes access to up to twenty five users so this is where if you wanted to give you know somebody in your compliance team in the risk team in the procurement team that you can then distribute those uh, access you know to the different team members who may then be looking at those same vendors but maybe from a a different user perspective and then of course yeah if you need more than 25 users then let us know and we can we can uh, create a customized uh, offering for you there okay so that's what i had uh if there are no more questions so of course yes simon and i will stay here uh in case there are uh, more additional questions uh, but if there's no more questions, then thank you very much for uh, taking the time uh, to show this offering. And I, I look forward to interacting and collaborating with you in the coming days and weeks. We'll send we'll send the slides around uh, after this uh, for your for your reference. Uh, and we can also send uh, this recording round uh, as well if you want to uh, show it to other people within your organization. I know there was someone on the who was on the call who had a problem seeing the screen. so. Um, it would be good to send it round to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manoj. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.